Um, if you get the opportunity, check out Jonathan Drouin's story about why he left the Habs last year. And imagine, I mean, he couldn't have known that they were going to the finals, but imagine, right? Uh, and, and, you know, he said, let me just give you this quote before we move on here. He said, I played uh, with anxiety for several years without really knowing what it was. Even in my first years, I was dealing with anxiety problems and it was difficult for me to speak to anyone about it or get help. I wasn't even sure what the problem was and I didn't recognize it, but last year it clicked. And I went to get some help and some people to support me. Now I understand what's happening. I understand little moments when you feel anxiety and things like that. So I've taken care of it and I know how to handle it now. And it led to him not being able to sleep and feeling sick and a whole bunch of other things. So I'm, I'm, that's one, that's one story I want to watch this year because I think, um, anybody who's journeyed with anxiety a little bit, uh, will tell you if you, if you, once you recognize it, it becomes manageable most of the time, right? Like there's some yeah. people where it's a medical condition and I, I completely, uh, my heart goes out to you. But for a lot of us, we don't even know that it's affecting our lives until, you know, you go and you seek help and you go, I don't understand what's wrong. And that's that's what happened to me. So you sit in front of a therapist and you're like, oh, I dread everything. Yeah, 100%. Like things that I should love, I'm dreading. What's up with that? Yeah. So um, definitely something that you should for sure, for sure check out. I, I do want to say one thing on that. Um, and I'm going to be old right now i don't think younger people fully understand the effects of not sleeping and i know because huh. we didn't sleep in our 20s because we partied right yeah. but you don't understand the long-term effects it has on you and for an athlete specifically not sleeping sleeping is when you recover so you play a you play a wild game and you go to sleep and you recover and then that's how you're able to go on the ice the next day and feel like an athlete but if you're not sleeping, you're not recovering and you're going to hurt yourself and you're so much more susceptible to injury. I fucked my back up when Leo was a baby mm -hmm. and I could not goddamn recover. Like I've, I've heard it a few times. I, I, no improvement, none. And it made everything so much harder. And it's because I wasn't frigging sleeping. So imagine now you're going up against Jake Muzzin and then- <laughs> The next yeah. night you're going up against, I, I don't know, you get smashed into the boards by Milan Lucic. And then you get- Or smashed, Matt Kachuk or Brady Kachuk. Or smashed into the boards by Brady Kachuk. And then it's, you know, Tyler Myers or JT Miller. And it's every friggin' night. It's four times a week. It's the worst travel in the NHL last year was the Canadian division. You're flying from, oh yeah, Calgary to Toronto, no problem. It's, uh, it's, it's tough. Oh stuff. yeah, you don't understand the role sleep plays in your life. And if you're listening to this at three in the morning right now, go to sleep. Go to sleep right now. Turn it off. Yes, Evan. I think anybody that goes to U of T uh, would say they don't care how much we sleep. <laughs> U of T, U of right. T, especially U of T. I, I know specifically our buddy Mike Stevens uh, has always told me he's like they just they don't care. <laughs> They're gonna overload you with work till you're dead. And then oh, the homework? Graduate. Yeah, he said it's insane. It's one of the craziest. He did journalism there. He said it's crazy. Unbelievable. He graduated, though. He made it. I thought he did political science. Did he do political science? I thought, yeah. he, I thought he did a switch. That's anyway, whatever. Story. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like, I, the, the kids, the people that are watching us at 3 a.m. are usually students. And it's usually they want to go to sleep, but they can't. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you gotta. Yeah. I get that. Sometimes you gotta. Not all the time. Right. Um, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Oilers to retire Kevin Lowe's jersey. Oh. Actually, who made that decision? Did uh, Kevin Lowe make the decision to retire Kevin Lowe's jersey? Well, <laughs> all right, guys. Next on the agenda is me night. What do we got planned for me? So Kevin, by the way, Kevin Lowe is in the Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. Okay. It's interesting because he did win five cups with Edmonton and another with New York. So the six-time cup winner. He had 84 goals, 347 assists in 1,200 games. Was he a defenseman? Yes. Okay. Um, and he will join Glenn Anderson, Paul Coffey, Grant Fuhr, Wayne Gretzky, Al Hamilton, Yari Curry, and Mark Messier being raised to the rafters. And, and sorry, what was his number again? Uh, number four. I'm trying to Kevin think of Lowe? who wore four before. Was it Taylor Hall? I don't know. I think he wore four. You're, you're asking me? I don't know. I don't know. So... The thing is, I think, you know, Oilers fans have a really, I think they have a really tough 
He's the alternate governor of the Oilers. He's never not worked there, right? He was the GM over the darkest years in Oilers history, unquestionably, and they never got better. They just never, ever got better under Kevin Lowe. And so my question for Oilers fans, and I don't know if this is possible, is when he went into the Hall of Fame, a lot of people said he shouldn't have gone. A lot of people said Kevin Lowe is not a Hall of Fame defenseman. He just happened to play with the Oilers in the 80s. Man, and as, I, as a 33-year-old, I'm not old enough to remember I don't, how good I don't, he was. I don't know. I, I know he was a defensive play. defenseman, but even that sort of has been debunked. But I know that Oilers fans, I think what's weird about this one is usually when you retire a jersey, people are super pumped. Oilers fans on the whole are like, why? I've never seen a guy being honored by an organization where there's so much pushback. You never, you know what you never see at a jersey retirement ceremony? Booing. <laughs> <laughs> and is that is that that's squarely got to be because of how he did as a GM, right? Oh yeah, probably. I and, mean, and also they're probably looking at this like, man, like you you were terrible, so they gave you a promotion. You're an alternate governor. You got kicked upstairs. Right. Yeah, that is that's uh, it's an odd one. It feels weird to say, doesn't it? Like I'd love for like has Mark Spector written about this. Because he, he's good at historical context with the Oilers. I don't know if he has. I don't think he has yet. He's good at that stuff, and I just don't have it. I didn't, like, when I did the Gretzky trade tree, I was like, wait a sec. I was, like, six months old when he was traded. <laughs> or something like yeah. that. So I was barely alive for Gretzky as an Oiler. I remember being a kid and being like, he played for the Oilers? <laughs> he was always a king. Right. Yeah. He was a king. And then he got traded to the Blues, his second team. What do you mean? It's not, it's what? I don't get it. I, I found out in like a kid's book. That he played for the Oilers. Yeah, it was, it was him in an Oilers jersey and I go, oh, I didn't know it. Uh, the only it's reason, not like I Googled it. It was 1995. The only reason I knew about Gretzky really at the time was because it was Gretzky versus Doug Gilmore in Toronto. Nowhere else. But here in Toronto, it was like, who's the better player? <laughs> and he wore the king. And he jersey. wore, yeah. And, uh, and people in Toronto at the time said Doug Gilmore was the best player in the league. That, that one year. Hilarious. And I love Doug. He was probably the second best player in the league. <laughs> but, yeah, but Wayne defense. was Wayne. <laughs> yeah, but let's see him go into the corner and come up with what Dougie comes up with, huh? <laughs> That's true. Huh? Dougie was tough. Man. Yeah, it's true. Fucking ain't yeah. right. It's true. Uh, Travis J Zajac has signed We should also mention oh. that the uh, Oilers also uh, revealed that they'll be honoring Joey Moss. Oh, yes. I did not see that. So, okay, I'm glad yeah. you said that. So uh, they'll have a special area in the locker room with a memorial for him. Uh, he passed away last uh, last October. I'm so glad they're doing that. Their longtime locker room attendant. Yeah, so shout out Joey Moss getting his uh, locker room memorial. It'll pretty, be great. Pretty darn cool. It's yeah. a great story.